In your experience level, you will probably be shunted into one of these three classes of software developers, junior, intermediate, or senior. In today's video, we're going to talk about what it's like being an intermediate or mid-level developer in order to help you determine your status in the pecking order. Mid-level developers will typically have had three to five years of experience in programming. They are able to create their own code, work with little or to no supervision, and coordinate parts of the overall project. You might also be required to have a bachelor's degree in computer with equal competence in full-stack development. In the remaining part of this video, we're going to talk about what you need to qualify as an intermediate developer, your responsibilities and how much you can expect to earn in your role. Qualifications of an intermediate level developer Companies utilize different standards in categorizing their developers. These depend on their projects and applicable technologies. The developer's area of expertise and in-house hiring policies to keep things general will only focus on regular qualifications. Beside your standard years of experience as a developer, another important factor is the scale and number of projects you've handled in the past. Obviously, if you have the requisite number of years, but minimal hands-on experience with actual coding, it may be hard to categorize you as a mid-level developer. Also, because companies have different project needs, you will need to have garnered extensive skill in implementing the kind of tasks they require. This includes proficiency in language-specific frameworks. Immediate level developers are routinely able to work using two or more additional languages outside their immediate field. You must be able to write code that works efficiently, can be tested with ease, and checks all the boxes in terms of quality. Technically speaking, immediate developers have an appreciable level of familiarity with the piecing different parts such as modules, APIs, and packages together in a system. The specific functions you'll need to execute depend primarily on your niche. As a web developer, proficiency in the design and development of application features, refactorings, object-oriented principles, plus a variety of others will qualify you as intermediate. For database engineers, it could be indexing, replication, advanced querying, sharding, and the usual mumbo-jumbos that form the core of the development speciality. An essential but also frequent underestimated area of a mid-level developer's competence is the ability to communicate with humans in pretty much the same way you do with computers or even better. You need to understand how elements such as customer requirements, office politics, deadlines, bureaucracy, and finance will each affect the way you work. On a more individual level, you qualify as a mid-level developer when you are over and above the rookie phases. At this stage, you are no longer asking basic questions and can work without a supervisor behind you. Your ability to co-opt independence with knowing when you should really ask for help or look to others for ideas is a strong reflection of your experience level. Sometimes you'll need to rely on teammates for solutions out of software fix. Other times you just need to work through it on your own by either going through Google or figuring it out with some private tricks. Now, using Google is a skill on its own. New developers might find software research a little tacky to conduct, primarily because they don't know where to find the best resources. But as a mid-level developer, you can do this without help. Roles of a mid-level developer Some of the most common responsibilities of intermediate-level developers include the creation and maintenance of code, analysis and implementation, reviewing projects for potential problems, and developing solutions, collaborating with teams and hierarchies in the company structure, screening the technical details of a task and manipulating code to fit into them, as well as making quality notes on project statuses, development stages, and potential future evolutions. You will also have to function as a sort of independent regulator to ensure that your codes are in sync with best practices in the industry. So how do you move from being a junior developer to an intermediate one? Master a new language. One of the first things you need to do is master another language. We use master because getting into a new programmer level is much more than knowing the surfaces, but actually having an in-depth understanding of its nuances. It is recommended that you learn one that has significant differences to the one you're familiar with, so you can portray yourself as versatile and well-heeled. You also need to know how to use this language in the most efficient and effective way possible. Start early. It doesn't take a fair amount of time to become skilled at programming. The one piece of advice that will never get old to intending software developers is starting early and investing time in the learning curve. The quicker you start your journey and the more intentional you are about it, the faster you rise on the career ladder. The unshakable truth is you earn greater respect in professional software development circles when you have years of practice behind you. In financial terms, you get to make more money for a longer period. Engage in diverse and visible projects. Now the one thing you cannot afford to do as an aspiring intermediate developer is holding back on the kinds of projects you engage in. 
You should try to make these as diverse as possible to improve your chances of securing a comfy role. You should also look out for tasks that will put your name on a map and add social proof to your credentials. If you play it right, you just might get into that cadre of nets between 70 and 100,000 in fresh US dollars a lot earlier than you thought possible. And that's it on today's episode. If you have any future ideas on the quickest ways to become an intermediate developer, do let us know in the comment section. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.